Uh, so thanks again for the opportunity to present uh, uh, my recent research at this uh, um, workshop during this uh, semester program. So uh, as I was saying before, it's a pity that I'm not able to, uh, to be there in, uh, in presence, but unfortunately there have been really a, a, a a crazy superposition of, of events during this uh, uh, beginning of the year after the after the pandemic so uh, i couldn't i couldn't really really make it anyway um it's uh, i mean the the um, uh, the topic i want to to present to you is something uh, um, slightly different from uh, what you have seen up to now and it's essentially Released on a on a recent approach uh, for which is specifically designed for kinetic equation, but that in principle can be applied to other fields where particle method play a relevant role, and uh, which uh, <coughs> essentially make use of uh, stochastic Galerkin projection uh, within a particle uh, a particle dynamic. So <coughs> I don't think I need to to spend a lot of time in a. In concerning the motivation for uncertainty quantification. Uh, this is a workshop to which dealt specifically with uh, UQ for, for PDEs. So I can be pretty, pretty fast on the introductory uh, aspects. Um, of course, it's what's really, what's really relevant. Uh, it's uh, issues concerning uh, computational cost, especially when we have to deal with uncertainty in uh, uh, PDEs which are highly dimensional, like in, uh, in kinetic equation. In this case, uh, uh, on, the, on the top of the usual uh, challenges, which are introduced by uh, the, the need to quantify the uncertainty in the equation, we have to be particularly careful in uh, the design of method which uh, uh, deal efficiently with this, uh, with this problem. Uh, the paradigm is the is the usual one, except that uh, uh, during uh, the solution of the PDEs, we have uh, several constraints induced by by the kinetic approaches, uh, the kinetic structure, sorry, of the of the equation uh, constraints, which uh, are related with the the need to design an efficient computational solver, but also constrained related to the physical properties of, uh, of, the, of the equation, like uh, non-negativity of the solution, uh, the conservation, conservation of moments, uh, the hydrodynamical uh, limit, actually, so the, the kind of model reduction that typically took place in, uh, <coughs> in kinetic equation. So here is a, a, a general setting for kinetic equation with uncertainties. Uh, well, uh, we of course we consider um, as a refer I mean as a solution of the dynamic a, a distribution function which depends on position, velocity, and the time. Here I use the z to denote the the variable in the, the random space, the, the random vector, let's say, and you typically have uh, the, the total variation, the total change, sorry, of the of the kinetic density in time is uh, due to a transport effect uh, in, in space with the free motion of the, of the particles plus the, the action of uh, an electric field if, if present in the velocity space. These are the classical mean field type dynamic. Uh, on the right hand side, you, uh, depending on the particular uh, kinetic equation you are considering, you may have uh, a binary collision dynamic, like in the case of the of the Boltzmann equation, which is the classical prototype equation, uh, where in this case typically you don't have uh, the presence of the of the electric of the electric field, which describes <coughs> the interaction in a in a in a rarefied gas, and in this case you have a lot of uh, numerical challenges at the, the deterministic level. I mean, in absence of uncertainty. Uh, we, we, since you have to deal with the discotivation of uh, the collision integral, which runs over an unflat high dimensional manifold, and it's uh, essentially the core of all the, the, the physical property of the equation. Uh, in plasma physics, you have uh, a similar collision, collision operator. In this case, you have charged particles, so you have the presence of the electric field in general. 
And uh, usually you have uh, the, the, what is called the Landau collision operator, which has a focal plank like a structure. Mm -hmm. You have many simplified models uh, that are typically used because of the uh, high computational cost of these uh, interaction operators. So the most common are VGK type model where you have relaxation type approximation for the collision process. Um, other kinetic equations, uh, uh, beside the classical field of rarefied gas dynamic and uh, plasma physics, uh, have been uh, considered in the recent years, uh, like the dynamic of swarms, more in general in the social sciences. Uh, even uh, I will not uh, touch this, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of subject. I think Matthias Nella in his, uh, in his talk he will discuss about these issues. Um, so, Uncertainty quantification approaches here with the focus on kinetic equation, of course. Uh, the, the, the two main approaches which have been used for kinetic equation are stochastic Galerkin methods, which are based on uh, um, generalized polynomial chaos expansion and uh, combine essentially this kind of expansion together with deterministic method in the spa phase space in a Galerkin setting. So they are highly intrusive, so you need to redesign also the deterministic numerical method. As a consequence, the computational cost is generally high. On the other hand, there is numerical and theoretical evidence in several works that they can achieve spectral accuracy. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you have, uh, uh, generally speaking, the loss of physical properties and even as it was uh, uh, pointed out also in the talk of yesterday by, by Martin Frank, the, the, um, you, have the, you may have loss of hyperbolicity if you consider the hydrodynamical limit of the kinetic equation when described by systems of uh, conservation and conservation laws. Um, Multi-fidelity method, which has been illustrated yesterday by Giacomo, uh, but there is a, a large variety of multi-fidelity method. Yesterday, Giacomo illustrated essentially the use of control variant techniques, but there are other techniques that which in principle can be, can be used. Uh, the, the goal is typically to accelerate Monte Carlo sampling, uh, which there is only one way as usual to accelerate Monte Carlo sampling, which means to reduce the variance of, of, of uh, the solution that we are approximating, mm, they are less accurate typically, of course, compared to a, 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 an approach based on orthogonal polynomial, but uh, they are non-intrusive and they are definitely more efficient, especially when we deal with high dimensional problem in the random space. Um, they may also, also preserve physical property. It, it all depends on the underlying numerical solver that we use in the physical space. Uh, there are many other methods which um, I haven't, I mean, which is impossible to mention all the different approaches which uh, have been proposed in UQ and that have been used in kinetic, uh, for kinetic equations. So they range from uh, moment method, kinetic polynomials, uh, multi-level Monte Carlo, uh, B-fidelity collocation sampling, which essentially is related to the multi-fidelity approach, except that the samples are chosen accordingly to a specific uh, um, greedy algorithm. Uh, and then there is, I mean, the, 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 the last kind of approach I'm going to present here, here is, uh, I would say, uh, is transversal to these classical traditional approaches. The, the idea of this stochastic Galerkin particle method is essentially to combine the accuracy of a stochastic Galerkin projection in the random space with uh, the efficiency of a particle method in the phase space. We know that in many kinetic equation, particle method play a dominant role. And this is uh, not only for uh, kinetic equation, but you have the different fields where uh, the use of particle method is highly popular. This uh, thanks to the, the, the flexibility that particle method have in dealing with uh, uh, boundary conditions, uh, high dimensional problem, uh, keeping the whole physics of the process into, into the, the approximation. So as a consequence, of course, they, they preserve typically the main physical properties because they are embedded into, into the particle dynamic itself. And as we will see, they're able to, to, to preserve in the random space uh, the desired accuracy, the desired spectral accuracy. So here is a general uh, introduction to the idea. Um, so we are back to classical particle dynamic. So we have a system of n particle. 
um, where, uh, which are characterized by position and uh, velocity. And uh, the idea is to essentially approximate their uncertain position and velocity by generalized polynomial chaos expansion, which have the usual, uh, I mean, the usual structures that uh, we, we, all, we all know, except that, as you can see, we are doing the expansion along the uncertainty of the single particle. Um, uh, the, the, the structure of the projection are the, the same uh, in terms of notation. Let me just point out that uh, the, the modes, uh, the coefficients of the, of the particle position are denoted with the hat as well for the coefficient of the velocities of the particles. And then, then we will have the presence of two indices. The first one, which refers to the particle, and the second one, which refers to the uh, coefficient that we are considering. Uh, okay, let me see in practice how this applies in a simple situation. And uh, we will then, uh, along my talk, which is essentially divided in two parts, I will show you how we can extend these to other fields where the situation is uh, more challenging and not immediate. And we will see where the intrusive nature of the approach uh, appears and how we can, we can try to, to, to take all this and to, to build correctly the projection. Um, if, uh, so in, in a simple scenario, uh, uh, the, this approach, uh, for example, in the case of a Vlasov of a Planck equation uh, of, this, uh, of this type, uh, the, the application of the approach is somehow rather natural because essentially the kinetic equation itself is, uh, uh, the, already the description of the, of the mean field dynamic of a system of ordinary differential equations. So we can rather naturally go back to the original system of stochastic differential equation, which originates the, the, the mean field, the mean field process and apply directly the projection at the level of the, of the SDE. This is actually what we have done originally together with the, Jose Antonio Carrillo and uh, Mattia and Mattia Vanelli. Uh, a crucial aspect here, as you can see, is that uh, in the definition of uh, uh, the uh, interaction operator in our kinetic problem, the integration here took place over the wall velocity space and physical space. Namely, we are averaging everywhere. Uh, as a result, uh, you have that uh, the, the original system of stochastic differential equation, which originates the dynamic in the presence of uncertainty, uh, is written uh, uh, here down as follows, where we have the, uh, the uh, essentially the, the usual uh, uh, Newton type uh, Newton type equation in presence of uh, of uh, a random noise. So with W I, I will denote independent uh, Brownian motion. So this is exactly in, in uh, the, the corresponding microscopic dynamic of the original blasov fokker planck equation. Uh, as we will see, the point is that uh, in, uh, now we more or less have an idea of how to, to go here. So we essentially apply a stochastic Galerkin approach directly to the set of ODEs. So uh, then exactly as I'm saying, uh, the, you have the usual two steps. So you first plug in your uh, truncated uh, representation of the solution on the space of, of uh, uh, orthonormal polynomial. And then you project the whole set of equation back to the space of polynomial of degrees le less or equal than N to get an evolution problem essentially for the coefficients of your, of your system. Um, so, and this permits to, to obtain an uh, evolution of uh, the particles of the, essentially of the coefficient of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the particle, which defines, of course, uh, the uh, general structure of the, of the solution. Once we, uh, at the end of the simulation, we reconstruct the particle position and we eventually reconstruct the kinetic density by some, uh, some approach, but this is an uh, uh, offline, uh, offline procedure where we can use some uh, 
uh, um, kernel density reconstruction or simple histogram or other, other approaches to reconstruct the kinetic density. Of course, uh, the advantage of this approach is that since we work at the level of particles, uh, there are no issues concerning um, positivity of the solution. The, the, so the positivity depends just on the reconstruction that we do at the, at the end. The, all the physical properties are, are, then, are then preserved because they are preserved at the level of the level of the particle uh, dynamic. Moreover, it's possible to show that, uh, but I will show you directly now in, with other examples, uh, that uh, this approach is uh, capable to preserve the, the spectral convergence in the random space. Namely, if we just consider the, the, the microscopic particle dynamic and we focus just on the convergence rate in the, the random space, you can, I think, intuitively follow the path and understand that at this level, since we are approximating the set of OEs, just in the random variable, we will, we, uh, the, the, the convergence will just depend on the smoothness on the trajectories of the PDEs in the random, in the random space. Okay, so in the first part, uh, uh, I will show you how to deal with this idea, if we want to consider the challenging case of the Boltzmann equation, which on the other hand is one of the most important when you deal with particle method. Uh, I'm focusing on the homogeneous problem because it's where the, the majority of the, the troubles comes into the game, because you understand clearly that for the transport process in our original kinetic equation, this is just a free flow of particles. So at the mean field level, things are uh, easier. What, where things become uh, particularly difficult are on the one hand to understand how to project a dynamic uh, which approximate the collision operator because these dynamics are not derived in a natural way. I mean, to prove convergence of this dynamic, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging. Uh, they are derived uh, originally more on the basis of physical consideration, but what we want to do is really to, to use everything in a numerical, in a traditional numerical setting. So we need to, to understand and eventually reformulate the traditional particle dynamic in such a way that we can project them. And another aspect uh, uh, is related to the fact that, that uh, mm, uh, it varies with the, the, the Blasov type of uh, equation that we have uh, uh, seen to illustrate the basic of the method. In many cases, the dynamic is local in space. So, uh, which means that we have to use the cells in space. And so there is the issue on how we deal with the global projection into a structure which has a local nature. And this will be the, the, the goal of the second part of my talk. So in the first part, let me consider the case of a homogeneous Boltzmann, Boltzmann equation. Uh, for, uh, for a homogeneous Boltzmann equation, we, 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 we can imagine we have this structure. I mean, we, we, uh, the, the, the collision kernel here is uh, particularly relevant in the design of the, of, of the, of the algorithm. We can focus on uh, the hard sphere uh, on the hard sphere case. And uh, um, I'm not sure all of you are familiar with the direct simulation Monte Carlo. So I will try to uh, recall it, uh, at least the essential ideas of DSMC uh, for uh, in the deterministic case. So by ignoring at present the, 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 the effect of uncertainties. So the first thing that you have to do is that the collision kernel is typically unbounded. Let's imagine it is just the, 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 the absolute value of the relative velocity between the two colliding particle B and B star. And so typically it's bounded by the use of some, of some uh, constant sigma. Of course, if you, if you deal with particles, then you have a finite set of particles and though this quantity is naturally bounded. So there's not really, the, the, I mean, there's the issue to compute it, but it's already into, into the game. But at the theoretical level, you have to, to imagine that you are doing this cutoff over the, 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 the cross section of the, of the, of the kernel, of the, of the equation. Um, then uh, you typically uh, split uh, the interaction operator into two uh, parts. 
where uh, typically the, uh, uh, the operator P of FF is essentially uh, the gain part of the collision operator, which, uh, however, uh, in the case where the collision kernel is not, is not constant, so it really depends on the relative velocity, this P of FF is rewritten in this form, so it's the gain part of the collision operator plus essentially uh, the difference between a, a constant cross section with this the upper bound minus the 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 uh, the cutoff uh, cross section that we use in practice and of course then uh, the the this part here is just what remains which is just essentially the the integral of uh, uh, the the mu is characterized by the integral of f uh, times sigma in the velocity space so it's essentially depends on, uh, on the, sorry, the, uh, in the space of the, of the angles so over the, 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 over the sphere. So that's why we get this, uh, this constant term. So why, I mean, this form is, is a little bit uh, uh, complicated, but it's the essence of uh, the Monte Carlo, the Monte Carlo idea. In fact, uh, this form, um, you, you see here, uh, you have uh, uh, this term here, which somehow uh, denotes uh, the, the uh, collision, uh, the collision process uh, characterized by the um, cross section B, and this term here, which essentially characterizes a collision process, where I mean, these are the essentially it, it characterizes the difference between using a constant cross section equal to to capital sigma and the defective cross section that we have in the in the system. Um, the, the, it can be better understood if we just go to the level of the sampling process. Uh, here the, I'm using the word sampling in the physical space because we are thinking about a Monte Carlo process, so a particle process in the physical space. So it's not a deterministic particle dynamic, what I, as we had uh, I mean, before it was not deterministic because it was a stochastic differential system, but it was not really a Monte Carlo kind of dynamic. Here it's really a Monte Carlo kind of dynamic. So the notion of particle here is the notion of statistical sample in the phase space, but it doesn't make any difference for the application of our, of our idea. It can be just a real particle or a, a, a Monte Carlo particle, then the, the, the process applies in a similar way. Anyway, when you, when you apply the, the direct simulation Monte Carlo scheme, you, what you typically do, you apply explicit Euler to the previous dynamic, and then you, you uh, <coughs> rewrite uh, your time integration step as follows, uh, which is composed by of two parts. So you can imagine that if mu delta t is smaller than one, this is a convex combination of our initial data, Fn, plus, uh, and, and uh, sorry, the, the um, and another distribution function, which is P of Fn over Fn over mu, it can be proved that this is also a distribution function, namely it has the same uh, uh, moments of Fn and it's also non-negative. Uh, non so all the Monte Carlo game essentially can be summarized in a way, in a smart way, to sample from this distribution function you have it on the, on, the, on the right. So with probability one minus mu delta t, nothing happens. With probability mu delta t, you have to switch to change your particle with a particle that comes from this distribution. So the crucial issue is how you get particles from this distribution. And what typically direct simulation Monte Carlo method build at this level is an acceptance rejection technique, uh, which uh, <clears throat> sample essentially the post-collisional velocity accordingly to this distribution. And the idea is quite simple. It's, uh, basically, by using the, the upper bound of the cross-section capital sigma, we estimate a certain number of particles which are going to interact. Of course, this is an overestimate because the, the, this, uh, this uh, mm, constant is an upper bound of the real cross-section. The problem is that the real cross-section depends on the particle. So we need to decide if the collision took place or not, depending on the values of the velocity. And this is done exactly by accepting the collision with a certain probability, which is given by 
the ratio of the, 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 the physical cross section evaluated with respect to V and V star over the, the upper bound. This is clearly less or equal than one, this is, and this is a probability. So that's the, how the game works. And this is just, uh, I mean, don't, don't be afraid of the algorithmic part, but it's just to, to show uh, this blue part how this uh, process works. So essentially, you have all your particles, you estimate the number of particles that, uh, that they have to interact, then you pick up a random number psi and uh, uniformly zero one. And then uh, if, if psi is smaller than the relative cross-section over the upper bound, which is a probability, then the interaction is uh, among the particle took place. Namely, we switch the values of the velocity of the two particles. So I think the first thing you, you have as an intuition right now that it, this seems very far from what we had before. So how we can build up here a stochastic allergic projection of such a crazy, complicated, and pure Monte Carlo dynamic. So it took some place, some time to understand how this has to be done. And the idea is to reformulate the acceptance rejection collision process as a continuum process with respect to the velocity of the particle, which involves an, an indicator function, uh, which essentially this indicator function to play, I mean, uh, um, works over the characterize, let's say, the sentence rejection procedure. So now consider the case with uncertainty, we can just reformulate the sentence rejection collision process as follows. So we have two velocity vi and vj, and the new values are vi prime and vj prime, and these are the way these are computed. So compared to the standard uh, um, dynamic, we have the presence of these two indicator function, which permits to reformulate the dynamic without the explicit, uh, let's say, presence of the acceptance rejection as it was before by using an indicator function. At this level, of course, we can now think to project so we go back to the polynomial chaos expansion. We plug in the, the truncated projection of the velocities into the binary interaction dynamic. And then we have to project back this binary process into the space of orthonormal polynomial. What you get is a set of evolution equation for the, the modes. Of course, this is different. It's not an ordinary differential equation because this is really a direct is an instantaneous interaction process. Uh, so the time is a macroscopic time, which is the one that we had uh, on the top of all these by the discretization of the, of, the, of the kinetic equation, where these are all essentially these are instantaneous changes. So there's not an, expi an explicit dependence in uh, the, the evolution of the of the of the modes of the of the binary of the binary colliding pairs from, from time. Uh, and then you have this function uh, w hat and v hat, which essentially uh, are obtained by the projection of the law which describes uh, the, 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 collision, the collision process. Um, typically, this, uh, I mean, then uh, this can be done uh, uh, rather efficiently. Uh, we don't have to compute the, all this. I mean, uh, you, you have to take into account that only whenever this indicator function is different from zero, we are ready to compute this, this, uh, this quantity. And this can be done uh, carefully by computing this at each collision for a given collision pair and a given random number of psi. Uh, we would typically use Gaussian quadrature in order to compute this, uh, these quantities. Um, so, the, the method typically works. Uh, 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 we, we will, I will then show you some numerical example, but before uh, going to this, uh, I will show you some uh, consistency estimate of the moment, which applies to this case and more in general to this stochastic alerting particle dynamics in the case of a kinetic equation. So once you have the particles as usual, um, we go back to the, the, our kinetic density by using the empirical measures. On the left, you have the empirical measure of the real particle dynamic. On the right, the empirical measure of the projected uh, particle dynamic. And then we typically are interested in the evaluation of, of the moments. So let me define 
by using the, the wedges, these brackets, uh, the moments uh, or essentially the integration of f against some, uh, some uh, function phi, which typically is uh, uh, a polynomial in, in the velocity. So it will typically characterize the, 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 the mass, uh, the momentum and the, and the energy of the system. You have that uh, uh, we have the, the moments of the empirical distribution function, which are computed directly from the particle, as well as the moments for the projected uh, empirical distribution, which is computed from uh, the values of the projected particles in our polynomial space. Uh, so we then have- Can I ask a question? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, so the FNM is the stochastic alerting? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, what, what do you mean by empirical measure? Because uh, usually you have moments, no? You don't have uh, I mean, this is, the, I mean, what you know are just the particles, okay? So in the physical space, uh, you have, uh, uh, the, in the classical, let's say, setting, you have the, 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 the velocity which are represented, uh, which are, I mean, the classical particle velocity here, you have the uh, approximation of the velocity which are being obtained by the projection of uh, the, the original particle velocity considered as a function of the, of the, of the random variable on the space of, uh, of uh, um, orthonormal polynomial, orthogonal polynomial that you're using. So you can imagine this is a reconstruction of uh, your, your uh, starting from the modes of your uh, velocity uh, for the particle i, which depends on the number of modes that you use, then you have just, again, you will have just uh, velocities, and then you build up the empirical measure, which is uh, this fn, which depends also on the number of modes that we have used. Uh, so they are still function of z, okay, sorry. Yes. I don't have a part. Yeah, 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 yeah. they are still function of z. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It's just the approximation that we have. Okay, so um, the, the, the kind of result we have, of course, uh, in, in, uh, is uh, considering uh, the, the, the kind of error we have with respect to the moment, it can be shown that is the, uh, somehow the, the, what, we, what we are expecting. So basically, in the, 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 uh, the error between the uh, real moment of our function and the, the projected empirical density, so the one that we reconstruct from the particle projection, uh, it's bounded essentially by a term which uh, depends uh, on the, which is the usual Monte Carlo convergence uh, related to the, the, particle, the particle dynamic, the particle approximation. This, Square this uh, n to the one half is the convergence in the in the in the physical space in the particle space. Plus, we have another term which has the 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 we the, 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 as the usual, let's say um, polynomial convergence of uh, the um, orthogonal projection, which depends only on the smoothness in the random space of our. Um, velocities essentially. So you have the usual spectral estimate. This also tells you that from a practical viewpoint, uh, you, you may imagine that only very few modes are necessary in order to get a good approximation uh, comparable to the approximation you have typically uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the particles. So I'll show you some examples here uh, rather quickly. Uh, just to show you that uh, essentially, if we frozen the particle dynamic, which means that we uh, there, there's randomness here into the game. So uh, um, if you this is really a Monte Carlo game, which means that if uh, you 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 try to to exploit the spectral convergence, it's essentially impossible because you have uh, you have the the the, the, the statistical error induced. Uh, by, by the sampling, but so, but then if you perform the Monte Carlo simulation uh, by uh, freezing the randomness, basically, if you are familiar with uh, with the uh, uh, quasi uh, uh, with the uh, um, essentially uh, with pseudo Monte Carlo generators, what you do, you fix the seed 
in the simulation, uh, then you can change the number of modes and see only the convergence rate with respect to the, the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> essentially the random variable. And you see, uh, and you can see the, the spectral, the spectral convergence as desired. Okay, I'll skip this because I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit uh, um, late in time because and I want to show you something concerning the uh, the case where we have a non-homogeneous problem, in particular considering application in plasma physics. So in this case, we consider a full problem. Uh, we have also the presence of the electric field. Now we have a self-consistent electric field, which is based on the solution of a Poisson equation. Uh, typically here, the collision operator is not the Boltzmann collision operator, it's replaced by the Landau collision operator. Uh, but I will simplify things, so I will consider now a BGK type uh, collision operator on the, on the right hand side. And uh, I will consider the full approximation where now the dynamic is local in space, and which is typically is approached by particle by a splitting between a homogeneous collision process, like the one that we have discussed uh, right now for the general Boltzmann equation. Uh, here, as I say, I'm simplifying in this part by using a simple uh, beach K type collision dynamic. Uh, and uh, the, the, the part, uh, which is the transport part, uh, plus uh, the presence of the electric field, let's say the Vlasov, the Vlasov process, which now, however, uh, it's uh, mm, there's a, a combination uh, between uh, local dynamics, namely when we consider the, the collision process, this collision process depends locally on space. There is no average on space. So which means that this is going to create uh, some kind of troubles once we want to project all particles in uh, uh, position and, uh, and velocity. Up to now, there was no presence of cells in all the dynamic that I've considered. Um, okay, so the collision step, it's uh, somehow very similar to the structure that we have explored right now. This is even simpler because we have an explicit solution in the case of the BGK, but again, you see the idea is very similar. Instead of having one minus uh, uh, um, mu delta T, here we have to take into account the presence of the of the of the uh, of the time scale of the Knudsen number that we have on the right hand side, and we have a convex combination again of uh, the, the initial density and the local Maxwellian equilibrium, which is a little bit like thermalizing immediately immediately the particle in one in one step. Uh, these uh, <laughs> the, the the only crucial point here is the fact that in order to compute the local Maxwellian, we need to reconstruct the, the uh, moments of uh, our particles, so the local Maxwellian depend on mass, momentum, and temperature. So they, this needs to be reconstructed over a grid. Remember that our particles are still represented by some uh, generalized polynomial, polynomial chaos. So uh, here we are. If we are in the deterministic case, there are no 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 big problem in doing in doing this. We just reconstruct the particles, and then we have this sort of uh, projection, which uh, again has been reformulated in such a way that is suitable for the for projecting in the in the by a Galerkin approach. As you see, I use indicator function here again to characterize that the, the the in this case is the the, uh, the time process, and I sum all over the cell that I have by putting an indicator function even even here so that I have like a direct representation which is suitable for the for the projection. The Blasov process is uh, more natural because it's characterized really by a couple set of ordinary differential equations that are typically approximated by using a Verlet type uh, scheme. This is a classical approach used in, in plasma, in collisionless plasma physics. So here you understand that the, the, the things is uh, the, the way we, we, we are gonna project and then the particle dynamic is somehow more, more natural. So now let's go to the projection. Again, we have our particles, which depends on the randomness. We replace the, the, the values of the particles by, by the truncated approximation uh, in the uh, <coughs> orthogonal space. 
And then we project everything back in such a way that we have an evolution equation for, uh, for the coefficients. Um, and again, this function here is uh, the analogous of what we have before for the, for the, collision, for the collision process. Uh, for the Vlasov transport step, we do- We have three, about five minutes left. Okay, great. Um, we do the same kind of projection, which is similar to what we, uh, <clears throat> we were doing initially in the, in the lab. Um, I show you some, uh, to finish my talk, I'll show you some movies concerning uh, the um, effect of uh, uh, some numerical simulation that we have performed for linear and nonlinear non dow damping and uh, other instabilities that occur in plasma, where we put uncer an uncertain perturbation of the initial uh, uh, data, which is the initial uh, local equilibrium, which is the, the traditional wave perturbation of the local Maxwellian, which is used in order to observe the, the, the Landau and the nonlinear Landau damping, where you typically, what you typically measure to observe this, this damping effect is the L2 norm of the, uh, of, the, of the electric field. And typically you can consider the logarithm of uh, this, uh, this quantity. Here you see the, the, uh, on the right, uh, there is the, the, uh, the solution with the confidence band that we, that we obtained. And uh, you see how the expectation is, uh, uh, agrees pretty well with the theoretical decay rate that can be, uh, that can be uh, computed. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, um, the damping effect where you can, uh, uh, with a, I mean, in this case, there is a strong, I mean, the, the main difference uh, here, uh, sorry, okay, this on the right, you have the kinetic densities and you see the, the filamentation effect uh, that occurs in the kinetic density and the need uh, to, I mean, here particles are doing a great job in the approximation because they can really capture very well all the structures uh, which are formed in the solution. And on the, on the left, you see uh, how the method performs pretty well in terms of expected value by identifying the theoretical decay and grow rate uh, that are observed in the, in the process. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is the true stream instability, which is a good uh, movie to show at the end of a talk because it's very, it's a, it's a classical, uh, is a classical process where we have a lot of a lot of structures. Uh, now the initial distribution is made of two bumps. It's no more just a perturbation of the Gaussian, but it's a perturbation of these two bump, two bumps. And uh, you so you see the, on the right hand side in the XB space the initial uh, Gaussian structures, and then as time goes on, uh, you have the formation of these. Uh, instabilities, uh, you see the theoretical estimate of the asymptotic uh, behavior of the logarithm, which is very well captured together with the confidence band. And on the right hand side, you see how structures are formed and how particles performs a, a very, a very good job in uh, describing all the structures that are formed in, uh, in, the, in the solution. Okay, so um, Let's stop uh, with the movies and uh, let me, uh, sorry, okay. Um, okay, so these are some concluding remark. Um, let me, uh, one thing I want to, to point out at the, at the end is that the approach is really very general. It can be um, extended to other kinetic equations. The crucial point is how to reformulate the particle dynamic when the method is not really based on a conventional particle dynamic, but it's based on some Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo process. For example, you see here two pictures where we, these are on the left, you have the Burgers equation, on the right, you have the Euler, the, the Euler system. Uh, if you build up artificial particle dynamic in order to approximate, for example, system of conservation laws or whatever, then you can apply this idea also to, to complete other fields, which have nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, of course, with, uh, with kinetic equation. Uh, I didn't have the time to enter in the detail, but of course you have to be careful because the introduction of this indicator function uh, may be delicate in the sense that it may essentially uh, destroy the smoothness in the solution. So the spectral convergence, this in practice is not really relevant because we don't really need 
such high accuracy uh, due to the low accuracy of the, of the particle dynamic. Uh, but if you want to observe spectral converse, and then th there may be the need of some regularization of the indicator function by using some sigmoid or function or, or something like that. So thanks again in particular to my collaborators, Andrea Medaglia, Mattia Tanella, Jose Antonio Carrillo, and Giulia Bertani.